You know what I can't stand? Wasting money, especially on software. Now I get it. There's some things in life that you need to spend more to make sure you're buying quality. Rock climbing gear is a perfect example. But luckily for us, we work in an area where spending more money doesn't always mean you'll get a better product. Take a look at Blender, for example. It's a fantastic 3D modeling software that's completely free to use and has kind of become the industry standard for 3D modeling. Now there's a term for this type of software. It's called FOSS, or free and open source. Today I would like to share with you all the software that I use on a daily basis, especially as a game dev. Not only that, but I'll show you free alternatives to software that I've actually paid for. So if you're struggling to find the right software for you, or you just hate paying for stuff, grab your notebooks, cancel your Adobe subscriptions, and let's get started. But first, today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and even get lost in creativity. Whether you're interested in improving your editing skills for your devlogs, or you just want to improve your game dialogue with a creative writing class, Skillshare has it all. I really enjoyed the logo design with Grids class by George Bokoa. It really helped me out so much when creating the branding and logo design for my game studio, Pyrrhith. What's great about it is there's no ads at all, and they're always adding new classes, so there's always interesting to learn and explore. And unlike software, exploring new topics and learning new things is definitely worth the money. And Skillshare is very affordable. It's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. A huge part of game development is self-learning, and there's nothing better than actually getting better. And accomplishing growth is extremely satisfying, and Skillshare's online classes make it possible. And for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, you will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creative side. Before we get into the list of software I use and alternatives, I want to explain a little bit more about FOSS or free and open source software. Basically, it's free software that people develop and they leave the source code online so other people can take it and make stuff out of it. Before FOSS came around, people used to use what was called proprietary software. These are products like Photoshop, Microsoft Word, or even game engines like Unity. Now there's one point I want to make very clear. Just because a product could be free and you can use it to a certain point doesn't make it free and open source. Using Unity or GameMaker for example, even though you can use the engine on a basic level, to really access most of the features, or at least the important ones, you have to pay a subscription or a single price. Unlike Blender, for example, where you can use it and you never have to pay for it and you have all the features available to you. I also want to emphasize that FOSS generally has better products, for the most part, because it's made by a community of people that just wants to make a really solid tool or piece of software. And one last little disclaimer before we get started, some of the free software I mentioned may not be FOSS, but I tried to pick software that is actually widely used by people and is actually quality. I mainly just wanted to bring up the idea of FOSS so that you can explore it yourself and find other great pieces of software that you never would have found before. Also, just know that this is my opinion, and if I left out a piece of software that you think is great and worth mentioning, make sure to leave it down in the comments down below. Let's get started. Starting off, we're going to talk about artwork, and we're going to break it into four categories. The first one we'll start with is pixel art. For those who don't know, I mainly use a software called Pixel Edit, and it costs around $10. I tend to get a lot of flack for this because most people think I use A-Sprite. Pixel Edit is simple, easy to use, pretty straightforward, and there's no like bloat extra stuff that you don't really need. It's just straight to the point and absolutely perfect for my game dev needs. Now some free alternatives to Pixel Edit would be MS Paint if you're on Windows. It's fantastic as long as you're not doing animations. Another good alternative is Piskel. It's in browser and it's really easy to use. Or if you really want a sprite but don't want to have to pay for it, you can get Libre Sprite. You have to compile it from source. It's super easy to do if you're on Linux. It's a little bit harder if you're on Windows. So make sure to check those out. Now moving on to the next section, we're going to talk about raster artwork. And really all that means is it basically has pixels. So any software that's like Photoshop. Now I think you may be surprised in hearing what my answer is. I actually don't like Photoshop at all. I mainly use paint.net. It's a super simple and straightforward photo editing software. I believe it's only on Windows and I've used it probably 10, 15 years. I do color correcting in it, resize images, I make my thumbnails in it, 
It basically has everything I need. Now another great alternative that's actually even better is GIMP. It really is a free and open source version of Photoshop that's fantastic. It does have a learning curve and I'm still learning how to fully utilize it, but it's a fantastic piece of software and a great alternative. Moving on to 3D, Blender is hands down my favorite 3D software. And to be honest, it's probably the best open source software out there to date. If you're looking to get into 3D and you don't know where to start, Blender is the only option you ever need to consider. And if you're looking for like 3D voxel software, Magic of Voxel is fantastic and I highly recommend you should use it. Next we have Vector. Now if you don't know what Vector means, it's basically artwork that uses mathematics instead of pixels. So no matter what size you scale it at, it's always going to be super high resolution. Now here's where I fall back into the proprietary trap a little bit. I do use Adobe Illustrator just because that's what I use for my job as a graphic designer and I've, I'm just really comfortable with it after using it for like seven to eight years. With that said, if you don't want to pay subscription, there's software called Affinity Designer. It's a one-time payment and it's basically as good as Illustrator. I'm slowly trying to learn it and migrate over it so I'm not spending insane amount of money per month. Now a free alternative is Inkscape. I would say Inkscape is fantastic if you don't have any money at all and if you're just learning to use vector art, start using Inkscape. It's a powerful tool but its biggest flaw is that it's really hard to pick up and learn. So if you can start using it right away, instead of being like me who has to try to learn to switch over from Illustrator, you're going to be doing yourself a favor. I also found another cool alternative called Vector and it's basically Illustrator but in your browser. It's, it's pretty simple, pretty basic, but you could do some cool stuff with it, so make sure to check it out. So next up, I want to talk about game engines. And I think this is going to be pretty obvious for those who've seen my videos before, but my number one choice for free and open source game engines is, of course, Godot. Godot is fantastic, and it's being developed by an awesome team, and it just keeps getting better and better every single day. I've completely fallen in love with it, and the fact that I don't have to pay licensing fees or anything, it's just I make a game and I can make money off it, is truly incredible. And to be honest, I like it so much that even if it did cost money, I still would probably use it. Now, if you're intimidated by using code and you want to use something more like Construct or Scratch, GDevelop is a great alternative that's also open source. I've played around with it a little bit and it seems like a cool thing to make some mobile apps pretty quickly. Though I will give a little disclaimer that it does cost if you want to do more than a couple exports in a day and if you want to use their uh, wireless remote play feature. I still consider it a free engine because you have access to all the tools. It's just those little extra things that most people won't need so that's why I included it on the list. Next we'll move on to the music and sound category. The number one tool that I use for creating music is GarageBand. I use it to create the music for Blizzard Blowout and even for Calamari Madness and maybe for Dewdrop. The only downside is that it's only for Mac, so if you don't have a Mac, you're out of luck. If you do, it's great, it's free, and I like it. Now, if you don't have a Mac and you still want to make music, there is a cool piece of software called Bosca Kiol. I'm pretty sure that's the Irish word for accordion. But regardless, it's pretty simple to use and it's great for creating tracks for your games, especially if you're not really into composing that much. Now moving on to sound effects, I use two different things. For one, I use Audacity. That's literally what I'm using to record this audio right here. It's free, it's great to use. And for sound effects I wanna generate, instead of using BFXR, whatever that horrible generator is that too many people use, I use LabTurp and it generates a lot better sounding sound effects. They just sound cleaner, they're not horribly piercing. Ooh, I just, I just can't stand BFXR. So those are the main categories of the software that I use. Now, there's a few more tools that I use that don't really fit in the category, so I just figured that we'd go through them real quick. We'll call this the lightning round. First off is video editing software. I use Adobe Premiere just because I'm used to it and it has a lot of great tools. If you're looking for an alternative, DaVinci Resolve is just as good, if not better, and it's completely free, so check it out. Instead of using note-taking apps like Google Notes or Evernote, I actually use one that respects my privacy and it's called Standard Notes. It's free to use, it's fantastic, it's encrypted, and you can have it on your phone, on your computer, all sorts of places. It's fantastic for writing notes and there's a plan to upgrade if you want to support them and have even better protection. For doing live streams and recording footage, I use OBS. It's really the best streaming software and it's fantastic, it's super powerful, and it's open source and free. Why not use it? Two quick other things I use are VLC editor for playing uh, video clips and Brave, a fantastic browser that basically is Google Chrome. 
but it doesn't spy on you and it has ad blockers. It's just fantastic and it's, it's great if you care about your privacy and don't want your web pages to take forever to load. Whew. All right, let's catch our breath. So that's the list. That's the list of software that I use and recommend that you use. And that a lot of it's free and fantastic. Once again, if I didn't list some software that you recommend, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always looking for new software to experiment with, especially if it's free and open source. Also, shout out to Buddy Games, Heath Sargent, James Kennedy, Rye Bread, and the rest of the wonderful, amazing, beautiful Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic, and you make making these videos possible. If you like this video and you want to see more of this content, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification. It helps more than you know, and I really appreciate it. But as always, I will see you next time on another Game Dev Adventure.